Well, welcome to Perk's Dream for February 23rd, 2022. Masks are great for parties, but they're not good for prayer. Hey, it's good to see you again. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, I hope that you have something good to drink as we sit here and chat a little bit about praying, praying in the difficult times, being able to actually pray even the bad and the ugly of life. I have never been to a masquerade ball. I think it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I think that part of it is the mystery of, you know, like who's behind that mask? Um, it could be a lot of fun, I think. I, I, well, I like a party, but, but being able to go through the guessing game and just enjoying the pageantry of it all. And I think there's this great scene in, in the blockbuster hit Phantom of the Opera where it's all given over to this I idea of masquerade. But even in that uh, scene from Phantom of the Opera, one of the key things about the masquerade is you are trying to hide something. It's not just that you're playing the game of who's behind the mask, but you're actually playing the game of who's behind the mask that's behind the mask. What's real? What's true? In a masquerade, we often keep things hidden because we feel something is not worthy or not acceptable to be shared. We, we kind of just say, I just, I don't want to share that part of my life because I don't think I'm going to be accepted. And the thing is that where God is concerned, God knows what is behind the mask. He's already guessed. He wants you to come clean with it so that he can set you free. But we still keep up the mask and we hide behind the mask of the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, we, we hide sometimes because we're ashamed. Uh, or, you know, sometimes we hide because, well, that's just such a small thing. God doesn't need to be bothered by my small things. Um, I'm not or it's not as bad as it looks. So I don't think I'm, I'm going to worry this with God. Even though I'm worried about it, God doesn't need to be worried about it. Uh, I'm not sure God can handle it. Now that's maybe a, a thought that just is ludicrous, but, but somehow I think we sometimes think that God's not able to handle what we bring to him. And then finally, well, if I share this, if I actually speak it out into the open, God's going to send me away. The very thing that we try to hide from God, really though, is the thing he wants to free us from. But he's not just going to free us from something and then let us back into life. Rather, I believe God wants to free us from things and then continue a work of transformation in us. What we should be prepared for is that, that there's nothing in all creation that surprises God. And not only is he not surprised, he's already in the know. He's just waiting for us to catch up with what he already knows. It's in that space where we agree on what's happening in life that he begins his transforming work. So we can be assured that nothing can separate us from the love of God and nothing is going to keep us from his love, the love that he wants to use to change who we are. And we should be prepared for transformation. Um, pastor and theologian Leonard Sweet put it this way. He said, Moses drew near to a burning bush and he encountered the holiness of God. Hannah drew near with a broken heart, not having a child, and encountered the holiness of God. Isaiah drew near and he encountered the shaking of the temple and seeing God high and lifted up and he encountered the holy. Mary drew near while talking to an angel and encountered the holy. And all four of these people from the history of God's people in the scripture teach us that, that when we encounter the holy, we are changed. Moses became the bold leader of his people, leading them out of their, uh, their enslavement. Hannah became the mother of Samuel, the great prophet that preceded the kings. Isaiah became a spokesperson warning Israel that, that God was going to exile them if they didn't change their ways. And Mary, she became the bearer of the hope of the world as an unwed mother. They were all changed. They were all transformed 
when they drew near. And they drew near without masks. You can find that even when Moses tried to buffer himself with God, he finally couldn't do that. And so God said, look, let's drop the pretense. Let's just talk about it the way it is. And Moses did. He encountered the holy. When we draw near to God without masks, we will encounter a love like no other and a change like no other. It's not that God doesn't want to give us what we want, but he wants to give us something even better, something that, that he knows will stand us in a better relationship with him and with each other. So when we learn to pray without masks and we pray the bad and the ugly, we are releasing that into his love and it swallows up and goes away. But then we are also changed that we are freed to live life in a, in a new liberty that comes from knowing that we are loved and we are changed. Maybe that transformation is really the scariest thing. We know that if we get right up to that line, it's not going to be what we want to do. Folks, all I can say is this. If we can trust God to forgive us and, and to, to give us new life, we can also trust him to give us the best life now. We can trust him to give us what is best that will help us love him more, love others more, to do his will more, to be in his will more. We can trust him to do that and it will be amazing. And imagine what would happen if it was not just true for every individual, but it was true for a group of people. It was true for the church. It was true for all of our lives. We can pray the bad and the ugly and God is prepared to remove it. And he's also prepared to change us in the process. So let's get rid of our masks.